watching KSL Sports Live. Zaire Williams has it and will throw it the length of the court. Oh! And banked it in! And banked it in! It's a good three-point make! Whoa, that's a full-court heave by Zaire Williams of the Memphis Grizzlies. Not half-court, but full. What a shot. Memphis cut a 29-point lead down to two, but it was the Suns who had come out on top. Welcome back, Chris Paul from injury. 22 points, six rebounds, 11 assists. The Suns are back to 500. The Nuggets playing without Nikola Jokic tonight, hosting the Thunder. Never fear, Christian Braun is here. My goodness, the dunk and the foul. This game went down to the wire, though. Tied at 99, nine seconds left when OKC gets a clutch bucket from Shea Gilgis-Alexander. That would be the winner. The Thunder take it 101-99. The Thunder are good. Blazers hosting the Lakers. Dame time in the first half. We've seen this before from the parking lot. Lillard had 24 points, 10 assists. The Blazers outscored the Lakers 45 to 13 in the second quarter. They led by 25 and blew the lead. LeBron with that behind the back assist to Thomas Bryant. Bryant had 31, LeBron 37, and the Lakers rally and get the road win. Morris on a switch. Lobs it inside the mark, he catches to the rim, and dunked it on Zubak! He took a right-hand hammer, and he just whacked the ball right there! Oh my goodness, Lowry marketing! How do you like me now? But a lot in L.A. There's a loose ball picked up, and a runner on a two-hander that comes off the rim, and the Jazz crowd stands as Utah got back defensively. Sexton! with the finish. Best sequence of the night. Hey, say what you want about this Utah Jazz team. They are not boring. From Lowry Market and poster dunks to rookie surprises, the Jazz have been very entertaining this season. Yeah, they go 2-1 and one this week. They've won four of their last six games now. Currently, they're ninth place in the standings, which, of course, changes by the day in this tight Western Conference race. Just four games separating third from 11th. And the Jazz rookies continue to impress, especially in Monday's win in Minnesota. Walker Kessler became the first rookie in Utah Jazz history to score 20 points and grab 20-plus rebounds in one game. He also became the first NBA rookie to do it since 2014. His 21 rebounds was a career high. And Ochai Abaji continues to shine and earn more minutes against Minnesota. He had 17 points, was 3 of 4 from 3 in the win. Abaji averaging over 21 minutes per game since January 5th, and he's taken advantage. The way they're carrying themselves, just even like the way they walk on the court, like they know now and they feel that they belong. All these guys, they, they do a good job in helping me. The coaches do a good job in helping me and, you know, staying ready and staying focused on, on the game plan and what we need to do. So right when I'm inserted into it, it's uh, uh, it's, in, it's in second hand, it's in second nature. And for Ochai, I mean, golly, he's been playing awesome ever since he's gotten his, his playing time. Like that lobby caught on the baseline in reverse. <laughs> I can't do that, and I'm supposed to be the lob guy. You know, I have no idea what either of them could or will turn into. None of us do, but both of them believe, and that's that's step one. I wouldn't say I was, like, not confident at the beginning of the year, but I just I understood that there was a lot to learn. I can't remember a specific moment. I just remember a couple block shots and a couple rebounds learning, understanding, you know, that I, I do belong. Both those young guys. College basketball, the eighth-ranked Utah women's basketball team had a road contest against Cal. Lisa Peely got the Utes started off hot on the offensive end of the floor, scoring the Utes' first seven points of the game. They were up 10 after the first quarter. Second quarter, former Ute and former Utah Ms. basketball from Corner Canyon, Kim Reed Martin hits the three. She had nine points in the game for Cal. Gianna Niepkin scored 10 of her 20 points in the third quarter. She missed only one shot all night, had nine rebounds. Peely also had 20 points in the game. Utes win again, 87-62. to The Red Rocks are ranked among the best in the country every year, of course, but they haven't won that national championship since 1995. How will the fifth-ranked Utes measure up against this season the team that's won five of the last seven national championships, the top-ranked Oklahoma Sooners? We're going to find out tonight. Red Rocks started on bars 
and had a... All right, so the Red Rocks were down after three rotations going into that beam, but it is their strongest event. Miley O'Keefe finished the night strong for the Red Rocks, a huge 9.975. Emily Morgan and Kara Aker chipped in 9 point. And Utah with their first loss of the season. All right, let's go into college football now. The 2023 Utah football schedule was released this week. Not going to be easy out of the gate. They get a shot at revenge when the Florida Gators come to altitude in week one. That's followed by a week two trip to Waco to take on Baylor. Schedule, man. Weber State closes out the non-conference schedule. Then they open conference play at home against UCLA, followed by a tough one in Corvallis. Oregon State's going to be tough. Their final game against USC in what is likely a long time will take place at the Coliseum on October 21st. Oregon, the following Saturday at home. Jeez, a tough road trip to Washington in November and a trip to Tucson before Deion Sanders and the likely to be improved Colorado Buffaloes make the trip to Salt Lake City to wrap up the season November 25th. All right, slides back. We got to break down the schedule. A lot of interesting things here. Let's focus on the first half, though. Right out of the gate, Florida, not sure what they're going to be, but they're still Florida. And then Baylor on the road week two. This is not an easy start. Yeah, that was my first impression with looking at the schedule. I'm like, this is not going to be easy, <laughs> but it's great. You know, yeah. it, it lets the players know, like, okay, if we want to do what we want to do, we got the players, we got the, the camaraderie, we got the team, we got the front office, we got the coaches, we have everything in place to take this to that next level, which is winning the Rose Bowl, winning the, uh, the uh, getting into the college football playoffs. So if we want to do those things, we got everything in place, a tough schedule is going to do it, right? And so um, I think that we start the season off with against Florida. You know, they are a, a very tough university year in and year out because they have extreme talent put together. But we've proven. We went down into the swamp. We took them on. We came up a little bit short so we can beat them. But, you know, and then going into the Big 12, we're literally going to take the SEC Big 12. I mean, we're taking on all of these big conferences to let everybody know that we're for real. And the Pac-12, I think they're going to be the strongest conference coming in next year. You know, um, SEC's been holding that title for a while, but uh, as far as a collective unit, Looking the Pac-12 sure. is going to be insane this next year. So Utah's going to have to come with their A game, and they're going to have to get ready to go. It's going to be highly competitive. And when you look at the last six games on the schedule, that's really where we're going to find out what this Utah team is made of. I mean, look at those opponents right there. That's that's a tough stretch to wrap up the season. Yeah, no question. That is my my thing. The first thing I looked at, too, was the USC Oregon in back-to-back yeah, -back -back -back. weeks, right? There's no bye game in between us, so you no. don't have to Whoa. bring your hard hat, you know, for those two weeks. But the biggest thing about this schedule for this year, we got seven home games. Yeah. So uh, this Oregon, Colorado, Florida, these guys don't know what it's like in Rice Eccles Stadium. And I think these fans are going to be high. Highly excited for this year coming back so with all the guys we have coming back, with all the talent that we have, unfinished business from this past year. I think this year is going to be rocking. Not going to play Stanford, not going to play Washington State. Mm -hmm. They didn't luck out with getting off without UC, USC, Washington, Oregon. But mm -hmm. like you say, the opportunity is there to do something special in 2023 if they can put it all together. Thursday night at Vivint Arena, the Salt Lake City Stars pay tribute to the history of professional basketball in our state by wearing the old Utah Stars uniforms. The Utah Stars were uh, in Salt Lake City. They came to Salt Lake City in 1970. Members of the ABA, which at the time was arguably more popular than the NBA, the Stars would win the ABA championship one year after moving here. The name is back with the Salt Lake's G League team, but if you ask me, they need to keep the uniforms back full-time as well. They look sharp. I support that. It's always fun to dig into the Utah Jazz archive on this day in 1992. 31 years ago, are you kidding me? That long ago, Spurs in town, the lights went out in the Delta Center. When the action resumed in the fourth quarter, the Jazz finished off David Robinson and the Spurs. John Stockton dished out 19 assists, Blue Edwards with the finish. He had 18 points, and the Jazz were led in scoring by Carl Malone. The mailman delivered 23 points, 17 rebounds, an assist, a steal, a block, and of course, a hammer dunk over David Robinson. He blew the roof off the place in a 100-98 win. Good memories. Two weeks ago, Tony Finau started off the new year with a top-10 finish at the Century Tournament of Champions. Three straight tournaments finishing top-seven or better. Well, today, he took his cuts at the American Express. 
He wasn't too bad. During Tony's hot streak, his putter has been steady and consistent. Well, how about today? This one from 33 feet away on the par 4 12th. Another perfect putt for birdie. He had eight birdies in today's final round. On the 16th, Tony's in the sand, but he's 37. Oh. Almost, it went about 37 yards. He would finish off the birdie, though. Tony finishes strong on 18. He goes pin high on this approach from the fairway, which would set him up for his final birdie of the round. He finished the tournament at 21 under, tied for 16th. John Rahm won the tournament at 27 under. As for the play of the day from... Paris shots in golf, amazing. Utah Grizzlies on the road and Tulsa taking on the Oilers. They started the game down 1-0, but would score four unanswered goals. Cameron Wright puts the Grizz on top 2-1. And Dylan Fitz would score the next goal in the second period. Brandon Cutler would add another goal in the third. Trent Miner with 44 saves. 4-1 Grizzlies get the win. They begin a six-game homestand on Wednesday against Rapid City. Let's head over to Germany for the BMW IBSF Bobsleigh World Cup, where Herrmann's own Keisha Love teamed up with Kaylee Humphreys in the two-woman bobsleigh, and they were blazing down the track today. They were lightning quick on their final run, hitting the finish line just two one-hundredths of a second faster than the second-place team to take gold. It's Love's third career gold medal on the World Cup Tour. All right, coming up are the running Utes running to the top of the Pac-12 standings. We'll show you where they are after a two-win week and why this guy's so hyped. College and high school buzzer beaters coming up next. He's still going. First free throw is no good. And with 51.9 seconds left, ladies and gentlemen, chicken is on the line and not a very good free throw shooter at the line. It could really happen right here. There is a chance for chicken. He's at the line, bounces once, twice, knee bend. Back rim, chicken! Jazz fans are starving for a championship. That'll have to wait, but they were also starving for free chicken. And that wait came to an end Wednesday night in the Jazz win over the Clippers. Kelly Olynyk is all of us. He loves a chicken sandy, just like the rest chicken. of us. It's all, it tastes even better when it's free, right? <laughs> As we look ahead for the Jazz, another busy week at home, Monday against Gordon Hayward and the Charlotte Hornets. A quick trip to Portland Wednesday to take on Damian Lillard and the Blazers. And then Luka and the Mavericks visit Salt Lake City on Saturday. The Mavericks were hosting the Clippers Sunday. Luka Doncic had 29 points and 10 rebounds, but was just 9 of 12 from the field. 9 of 22, I should say. When the Clippers have Kawhi and Paul George in the lineup, they are a contender. Leonard had a game-high 30. PG-13, 21. Jazz just a game behind the Clippers and a game a half behind Dallas, even though they're ninth. The West is crazy. And you know, the last time Kyrie Irving was on the floor, he had that 48 against the Jazz. Tonight, 38 more against the Warriors, but he had nine assists. One of those right here, less than a minute to play. Team down a point. Royce O'Neal with the go-ahead three-pointer. Royce had 16 points. Down four with time running out. Steph Curry from deep. That's off the mark. The Nets win 121-16. On Saturday night, Utah Tech defeated New Mexico State. And with that win, head coach John Judkins notched career win number 600. His overall record at Utah Tech, 600 wins, only 302 losses. He now stands four wins shy of his 300th NCAA era victory at Utah Tech. How about those running Utes? Two wins this week over Washington State, and Washington have pushed their Pac-12 record to 7-3, which puts them all alone in second place in the conference standings, just two losses behind UCLA. The Utes will be back on the court on Thursday at Oregon State, then Saturday at Oregon. All right, if you're looking for drama, we've got drama thanks to some exciting finishes this weekend in college basketball. Yeah, the Aggies, Wildcats, and Wolverines all had games decided in the final seconds. Here we go. Utah Valley making the tough trip to Grand Canyon, taking on the Lopes. What a sequence here. Latre Darthard with the save. Justin Harmon finishes it with a dunk to give the Wolverines the lead. But Grand Canyon had a chance to win or tie at the buzzer. Chance McMillian is fouled at the rim with .9 seconds left. Needs both free throws to force overtime. The first, no good. He had to miss the second on purpose. Utah Valley gets the rebound and they clinch a big road win. They're now 7-1 and one in wax play. Huge win for the Wolverines. Wild finish in the Purple Palace. Weber State and Sacramento State. Game tied at 48. Weber's ball with time running out. Dylan Jones 
puts the Wildcats in front with six seconds left. The Hornets have time to tie it or win it. Zach Chappelle at the buzzer. Weber State is going to survive because Chappelle's shot does not go. They're now 10 and 10 on the season, but third place in the big sky. And the Aggies taking on the San Jose State Spartans in the spectrum. Upset alert here. Steven Ashworth's going to steal it. Then he's going to run up, and then he's going to pull up from three. Splashworth. It's a four-point game. Late in the game, Utah State still trailing. Dan Akin with a big dunk to cut the lead to four. Aggies chipping away. Under two to play. Aggies down one. Q Ashworth again hits the three and the lead. 74-72. Final seconds. We're tied at 74. Max Shulga drives and draws the contact. He made one of two free throws. So the Spartans had the last shot for the win. Oh, it goes off rim. Utah State survives now five and two in Mountain West play. And that guy is so hyped. He can't even contain himself. Aggies win. All right, now some high school hoops. We had several great games on Friday, and a number of them went to overtime, including a rivalry game in Region 4. Yeah, defending champion American Fork was visiting Lone Peak in that game. Yeah, and it was a hot week for Riverton as well, but one of their wins came with a fraction of a second to spare in the game. The top two teams in Region 3, Copper Hills and Riverton, went to overtime. Just over a minute to play. Copper Hills' Isaiah Riser with the steal. Logan Whitehour misses the land, but Riser puts it back in. And the foul. Copper Hills is up two. Final second, still a two-point lead. Riverton with the ball. Jackson Krikus with a desperation shot. No good. Logan Dunfield rebounds, puts it up, and is fouled with no time left. He hits both free throws to force overtime. Final seconds of OT tied at 68. Riverton's Caden Allred. Off the mark. But Logan Dunfield, the putback and the foul with 0.1 on the clock. A wild win for Riverton, 71 to 68. Riverton's other big win came on Tuesday night against West Jordan. In the first quarter, the Jaguars, Jordan Acey, the putback dunk. But just a little too much Jackson Krikus in this one uh, for Riverton. He led the team with 16 points, and the Silver Wolves get the win 59 40. They're now 12 and 4 overall this season. Staying with 6A hoops, a close one here. American Fork and Lone Peak. 30 seconds left, American Fork down one. Blake Rossin backs it down and puts the caveman up one. Under 10 to play. Lone Peak's Cameron Swiggett finds Jorge Juarez. Lone Peak back in front. Last chance for American Fork. Off the missed Lone Peak free throw. Desperation time. Oh, it was close. It was close. No good. And the Knights, they rush the court. They're 4-0 in region play. Some kids just have all the talent. Harriman girls basketball player Kenley Anger showed us that in a game against Copper Hills this week. As she was falling to the floor after being fouled, she just turned it over into a front walkover. She immediately laughed it off with the teammates and got perfect tens from those fans in the crowd. All right, we know baseball is a part of Utah's pro sports DNA, and now a major change is coming. The Larry H. Miller Company announced this week it will build a new AAA baseball stadium in South Jordan in the Daybreak community. That will open in 2025, which will also mark the end of a historical run in Salt Lake City. 1300 South and West Temple. That has been the home address to professional baseball in Salt Lake City since 1928. The ballpark was later named for longtime Salt Lake Tribune sports editor John C. Dirks, and Dirks Field became the home to a team that wrote history. Will you get 28 tomorrow? We, we'll get it. That's a guarantee. Well, I guarantee it right here on TV. We're all sold out. There's no possibility of getting in. In 1987, the Salt Lake Trappers, an independent team in the Pioneer League, went more than a month without a loss. And on July 26th that year, they broke the record for the longest win streak in professional baseball history. The streak would end at 29, and five years later, so would the Trappers stay in Salt Lake. Actor Bill Murray watched that history unfold. He was a part owner of that team. But in 1994, it was time for an upgrade. A new team with a new ballpark at the same great location. When we were here, this field was a rock pile. And our, our, our groundskeeper at the time, Tommy Hasser, transformed it. And it's beautiful now. It's really beautiful. The park is beautiful. Franklin Quest Field was built, and the Salt Lake Buzz were born. The AAA affiliate of the Minnesota Twins, cranking out talent right away. Marty Cordova from that inaugural team went on to be named Rookie of the Year in the Major Leagues. 
Dozens of Major League greats would blaze their trail to the big leagues through this stadium. Hall of Famer David Ortiz played in 151 games for Salt Lake from 1997 to 1999, hitting 30 home runs and 110 RBI in that 99 season. Torrey Hunter's final minor league stop before beginning a five-time All-Star career was in Salt Lake, where he played in 81 games over two seasons. Before winning a World Series with the White Sox, catcher A.J. Pierzynski played in 157 games with the Buzz. 63 saves in a season is a major league record. It was set in 2008 by All-Star Francisco Rodriguez. But before saving 437 career games, which is fourth all-time, K-Rod pitched in 27 games for the Stingers in 2005. Most recently, three-time American League MVP Mike Trout slugged his way through Salt Lake with the Bees in 2012 at Smith's Ballpark, batting 403 in 20 games before getting the call. All right, fun week ahead. Starts with the Jazz and the Hornets on Monday. Gordon Hayward back in Salt Lake City. Sam, how do you think the fans will receive <laughs> Gordon Hayward on Monday night? Are they going to do a tribute video? <laughs> I don't think so. No. Have a good night. I'm going to go get some Carl's Jr. <laughs> or maybe some.